Hey folks, we're going to show you how to break loose a stuck clutch on a BCS machine. So there is uh, a method shown on our website, or rather written about on our website. There's a text document you can download or read off our website that shows you kind of a shortcut, easy method of breaking loose a stuck clutch. Try that first before you get to this. This requires removing the engine. Uh, the, the procedure you know, set forth in that text document is very basic. You don't need a video to follow that. But if that doesn't work, you have to take the engine off and break the clutch loose manually. Uh, and just to preface this, VCS cone clutches, particularly what's considered the second generation, uh, how shall I say, heavy duty cone clutch, uh, which was introduced around 1990 and is still in production today. These clutches are typically a reliable clutch but they have this idios idiosyncrasy that if you store the machine with the clutch handle up on the handlebar in the released position, as you see it right there, in the released position, um, and, you, and the machine is stored for a long period of time that way, the, the moisture that is drawn by the metal parts could cause some surface rust on the surfaces of the clutch. We're not going to get that phone. Somebody else can get it. Uh, and cause the clutch to stick. In that case, you go to squeeze your clutch handle and it just won't squeeze. And if you do get it squeezed, it's extremely tight, and when you try to put it in gear, it like grinds gears and everything because the clutch is not releasing. It's not, it's actually frozen and you're just stretching the linkage by trying to squeeze the handle. So that seems to be the case with this machine. Uh, this is an old BCS 715, probably from the 1970s. It didn't originally come with a Briggs engine on it, but somebody's put a Briggs engine on it and at that time updated the clutch to the, uh, the heavy duty cone clutch type and it stuck. Most of the time on any modern tractor that, uh, now I've already removed the bolts or we've already removed the nuts that held the engine on. There are typically either four or six nuts. This is a five horse engine so it only has four studs and nuts. The larger engines will have six studs and nuts. Uh, but we already removed those prior to taking the video. Here is the heavy duty cone clutch. Um, but normally this style of clutch would not have come in a, in a machine this old. And this, this, this combination was kind of a disaster waiting to happen because when this old transmission was updated to a newer clutch, this clutch handle, and we'll pan back up here to the handlebar, this particular clutch handle, which was designed for this older machine, does not have a way to lock the clutch in the squeezed position. All the newer tractors, starting in around 1991, 1992, had a little latch right here where you could squeeze the clutch lever, swing the latch up, and the latch would actually keep this clutch lever in the squeezed position. That keeps the clutch down at the engine open and keeps it from freezing. These old tractors didn't have that because they originally came with a clutch that wouldn't stick. So we're gonna have to do something for this gentleman who owns this tractor. We'll probably give him a, a piece of like a PVC pipe. He can slip over here to, to hold that in the squeeze position. And you're welcome to do that for your own, your own tractor if you've got an ancient machine that needs this, needs this done to it. So now we're gonna remove the clutch from the engine shaft. This is the earlier style of mounting system holding the clutch onto the engine. It has a jam nut here and a set screw in the middle. I'm going to put a 13 millimeter socket onto the jam nut. Oop, I'm not going to put that one on. There. That's too fat a socket. You need, obviously, a thin wall socket. So I will grab a thin wall socket. And let's see, where are the thin wall sockets? Here's one. Mm, boy, that is a tight bugger. Somebody didn't want that coming off. Mm, okay, I'm loose. All right, now I'm gonna get the set screw loose. That's a four millimeter. There. That set screw is tight, so I'm going to do a little trick. I don't want to break the head of that set screw off or round out the Allen key, so we're going to do a little trick here. I'm going to grab a punch and a hammer, and the punch is sized so that it just fits down into the Allen head all the way to the bottom. 
bottoms out in there. And then we're going to give this a couple smacks. That will shock the, the threads of that thing right down the Allen head or right down the, uh, the shank of the bolt. Usually that'll help break these loose. Ooh. Tightening a little, loosening it. The newer clutches, by the way, starting around 2007, they started putting a bolt down the center to hold the clutch on, but this is the earlier style mounting with the set screw. Boy, this is gonna hurt. Might have to put heat to this thing. All right. Now we've employed a propane torch and gotten our bolt loose. So the bolt is now loose. And now we'll pry the clutch off the engine crankshaft. Have a couple of pry bars here. A lot of times these clutches will just slide right off, but this one is kind of stubborn. So we're gonna... You notice I have uh, stuck a block of wood under the engine so I didn't have to disconnect the throttle cable when I did this. I actually left the throttle cable hooked up over here. But if I had to put the engine up on a bench, then of course I would just disconnect the throttle cable. But I'm trying to do this on the floor, show you the quick way of doing it. Yep, there it is. If you're going to use a pry bar on one of these clutches, you have to use two. You've got to pry evenly on both sides. We've even seen cases where this bolt will break off because it's so badly seized in there. And how do you get it loose? Well, the bolt pushes on the keyway that's in the side of the crankshaft, the little, uh, the little you know, kind of key stock that's in there. So it'll actually slide, that bolt will slide along that key stock, or sometimes if it's bit into the key too bad, then it'll just slide the whole key out with it. So essentially, if that bolt breaks off, you don't have to try to drill it out. Just use some pry bars and slide the clutch off anyway. It takes a lot of force, but it can be done, and it's a much better alternative than destroying your clutch by trying to drill that out. Because the clutch housing here is aluminum, and this bolt is hardened steel, and believe me, uh, it's much easier to destroy the clutch housing than it is to get that bolt out. This thing is really stubborn, but it's coming. There we go. All right, so there is the clutch. There's the throat bearing. We call that the throat bearing. This is the, this little piece on the end is called the cone pusher because this is the piece that this interfaces with your clutch lever here in the transmission. We're actually, I'm going to call this the clutch fork because technically that's what this is. This is the clutch fork. It goes down in here and kind of opens up into a fork. <clears throat> Probably not good enough light to see it in there, but, uh, Anyway, that's, that's the fork moving up and down. Those, the forks push right against that cone pusher. They call it a cone pusher because this is pushing on the inside cone of the clutch. Essentially, this is a double conical clutch. You've got an outer cone and an inner cone. And the throwout bearing pushes on the inner cone and makes it recede into the clutch. But right now, what's happened is this inner cone is stuck against the outer cone. It's jammed into the inside of it. We're now gonna break this loose we're going to carry it over here to the vise. Open it up. You can use a press for this if you don't have a vise, or you can get creative and use a... Uh, on some of these clutches, like this one, there is actually a hole all the way through the middle of the, of the clutch. Uh, some engines don't have that available. That is, if you've got one of the clutches with a bolt down the center, then you can't access all the way through it. But if you've got a hole that passes all the way through and you can actually see light through it, another way you can do this if you don't have a vise is pass a piece of half inch threaded rod through the center of the clutch and use a big washer and a nut on each side and crank them both down to squeeze the clutch inward. And that's what we're going to be doing here. We're applying pressure to squeeze the clutch inward. We're manually breaking these clutch cones loose from each other by exerting more force on it than what you can exert with the clutch linkage on the tractor. Now notice, 
when, the, when this cone pusher is in the tractor, it's rotated around like that so that the clutch fork can push here. It's pushing in and the tabs are kind of resting against the bottom of the clutch fork. When we put it in a vise, I turn that over because we don't want to push on those little fingers. If I open this all the way up and push on those fingers, guess what's going to break off? The fingers. So we put those above the vise. This is the load bearing surface of that cone pusher. So, and now I'm going to tighten this, and we're probably going to hear a big, big bang after I start tightening it. Hear that bang? That was the clutch breaking loose. Now that it's broken loose, you can see that the inside of the clutch goes in and out. This is what happens when you squeeze your clutch. That is, when you let your clutch handle out, it comes out like this. The inner cone contacts the outer cone, and it transfers power. When you push it, when you push, squeeze your handle, it pushes the two cones apart from one another and allows the inside cone to turn separately from the outside cone, which is what you're seeing right now. I can turn that with my thumb. Now, it's not turning super smoothly. There's a little gritty feel to it, but the bearings don't feel too bad. I think it's just a bunch of clutch dust in there and maybe some rust, because if the bearings were bad, you'd really get a gravelly, grindy feel. And this one rotates fairly smooth, uh, uh, except for the kind of dust feeling. So I'll take an air compressor and blow this out uh, while it's compressed like this. But that's basically the way this clutch is supposed to work. When you let, when you clutch, let the clutch out, of course it's one solid piece. There's an enormous spring inside this clutch that's pressing the inner cone against this outer cone on the inside. And that's what transfers your power. So often one of these bearings will go out. There's a bearing on the inside and a bearing on the outside. The bearing on the outside is easily replaceable, the one on the inside not so much. But we can still do it here with tools. You have to send your clutch in and we can rebuild it by putting a new bearing in it. The factory does not authorize uh, anybody taking these apart except dealers who have had the proper training. They're not considered a serviceable clutch. But this one is rolling on the inside, so I think that's good. We'll blow that out with a little compressed air. See what kind of dust and dirt comes out. too bad. Probably a few dust rust flakes in there. That, that rotates pretty smooth. Okay, so we've broken that clutch loose. Now we're going to put it back together and put this guy back in service. Thanks for watching. I also want to say one thing briefly about breaking a stuck clutch loose. There's some people who have a stuck clutch in one of these machines and they get the bright idea that they're going to break it loose by extra leverage on the clutch fork. So they take their cable clamp off, which I've already loosened. They put a uh, two foot cheater bar on this thing, like a big piece of pipe. And they say, well, I can put a lot more force on this this way than I can with my you know, little clutch cable and linkage. So they really lean on it. Well, guess what? The pivot point where this fork pivots down here in the transmission, it's kind of the fulcrum point of the lever where it, where it pivots down at the bottom, is just a piece of aluminum that's part of the transmission casting. It's like a little finger that sticks off and a clutch fork is pivoting on it. You put very many pounds of force on that, you snap that little finger off. Suddenly, what was an easy job turned into a $350 transmission casing plus about $500 in labor. So don't do that. <laughs> if you can't break it, your clutch loose with the simple method that we outline in the PDF on our Earth Tools website, take the engine off and break it loose the manual way like what we're showing you here. So just a word of the wise.